Hi guys, it's me, Indiana Jones, and what am I doing in this getup? What kind of question is that? Haven't you ever been here before? Oh, I'm sorry, you haven't? Well, welcome to my channel. I kind of dress up every so often, so I thought for today's theme, what a perfect way to celebrate, but by dressing up in what is called dark academia. It's one of those aesthetics that are out there right now, similar to cottagecore, but a darker version. So let's venture into dark academia and what crafts we can make at home. So for my first craft, I like to create something called a wall parasol. That's right. And look at me, I really got into the dark academia and crafting by candlelight. But if you guys know me well, you know that crafting by candlelight isn't a safe thing, so it doesn't last forever. So these are the items I'm using. I'm using a cardboard box, a piece of a cardboard box. I am using one half of those little curtain rods that you find on the side of the street. Yes, I found mine on the side of the street. And I'm using those, um, I guess it's called a tomato cage or a vegetable cage that you can get at the Dollar Tree. And all I did was go outside and spray paint it black. So we will be using these items to create the basis or the foundation of our wall parasol. These are so much fun to make. You'll, you'll get hooked. I hope you get hooked. So as you can see, I'm going to be doubling up with the cardboard and that's why I have the two triangles. Right now what I'm doing is cutting the wire cage, the round part of the wire cage. You can also use um, the wire wreaths that you find at the Dollar Tree. But there you can see what's going to be the foundation of our parasol. There you go, that's gonna be the opening. And basically it's gonna look like a parasol that's hanging on the wall and you can fill it with flowers or greenery. It's really pretty. So there you can see I already doubled up the cardboard just to give the base a, a bit of a stronger um, foundation. And now I'm going to add the tomato cage items. So I already added that gold stick, which is basically one half of those little curtain rods that you can find at Walmart or again in the garbage like I do. Now here I'm adding the tomato cage um, part of this. And what I'm using is the tomato cage actually has these little um, holes or brackets that hold the wire. How perfect is this? And there you can see the parasol is getting its shape from these um, items, the tomato cage sticks, I guess you wanna call them. And basically I'm just using the round part of the tomato cage and that's going to make the actual form of the wall parasol. And here you have it. It's basically, there's the foundation of your wall parasol. Now comes the next part, which is the fun part. And that's adding the fabric to your parasol. Now, if you're smart, you can totally skip these next steps because you can just buy fabric that has the print that you like and all you need is half a yard for this project. But do I do that? No, I wanna create my own print. So here I am using some burlap fabric from burlapfabric.com and some Plaid FX acrylic paint. It's flexible acrylic paint, which is perfect for fabric because as it dries, it doesn't crack, it flexes. That's right, so here I'm using stencils, stamps, whatever you like, and you can create your own, I don't know, I, I like creating my own pattern. So there it is. It's, it looks like a mess. It looks like, you know, graffiti. But hey, I've seen this style in the stores, and fabric like this is usually like $9.99 a yard. So yeah, this is a lot, a lot less expensive. And again, you can style it any way you like. Now, here we go. Now we're gonna create the actual parasol. There you go, basically you're seeing what I'm doing. I am just like, just throwing the fabric on top to figure out, okay, how am I gonna do this? Then I decided at the last minute, I was like, hey, I got some black lace, that would look really pretty. And I thought, since this is dark academia, there's a little bit of elegance to it and stuff. I don't know if it's dark cottage core, dark shabby chic, whatever you wanna call it. And all I'm doing now is instead of sewing it because I'm lazy, I didn't wanna get my sewing machine out. I just used the glue and um, a popsicle stick and I made my own little ruffles because every good parasol has to have a ruffle. And then to trim the top, I used another beautiful piece of lace that I found at Hobby Lobby and it was 50% off. So 
I couldn't resist. Look how pretty that is. And just like shabby chic, there's no such thing as excess, especially when you're trying to make things very feminine and floral and, you know, extravagant. That's what, you know, shabby chic is all about or French country or cottage core. It's, it's those at attention to detail and a little bit of extravagance. Now here I am just gluing the back of the fabric to the back of that cardboard and just making sure that I create these little pleats. That's right, you guys know what I say, pleat and repeat. It's basically the step is pleat and repeat. And I, I basically created the pleats with a little bit of glue. And as you can see, I already pleated the top. Just keep on pleating and repeating. And that's why I like to keep it a, a bit wider than you actually need. I would add another like five or six inches to the top just so you can pleat it and make it look very feminine and very chic. Now I'm just gluing the back of the um, parasol. I love watching myself as I do this because I'm like, my gosh, how long did this take? It took me, I'll tell you the honest truth, it took me about 75% uh, uh, of a movie. I think I was watching Sense and Sensibility, which made no sense to me at all. I, I don't know, some of those movies, I love those. I love, you know, all those movies, those English movies, anything English. And I thought, you know, this would be cool to watch something English while I make a parasol. So yes, that's what I was watching. And of course, Ellen Rickman's in that movie. My goodness, talk about dark elegance. Man, that man, God bless him. So there you go, I'm making, there's the parasol. Gosh, that looks, I like it, I'm so happy with it. And I have made a parasol in the past uh, for another Shabby Chic collaboration, but this one, I, I really feel like I nailed it with this one and I love it and I wanna do something similar for Halloween. I think it would look really cool with some Halloween print. Actually, this looks like something that you would see in that movie, uh, Sleepy Hollow. What was her name, Van Tassel? Yeah, that would match the Van Tassel striped dress so perfectly. And here I'm adding, what else am I adding? Of course, I'm adding stuff from Totally Dazzled because it's totally dazzling. Why not? A little bit of excess, never hurt anybody. And a little bit of sparkle or a little bit of dazzle always makes a better day. So there you have it, guys. This is my wall parasol. I'm adding a little ribbon to the top. And basically all you have to do is add some flowers to the inside and hang this on your wall. And it just makes for a perfect dark academia addition to your decor. So I wanted to tell you guys that this is part of a very, very special collaboration called Guys vs. Gals Friend Hop. We're not really challenging each other, but I thought it was cool to collaborate with all these wonderful male creators here on YouTube, as well as my wonderful creative crafty sisters. So this collaboration is being hosted by the wonderful and dear friend of mine, Jamie of the Crafty DIY Guy you have to check out the other channels. And again, this is part of a hop, so you don't miss a single project. Now, this is one of my favorite crafts to do, and it's called a floating teacup. I make floating teacups at least three times a year, and I thought, oh my gosh, this dark academia theme would just be perfect with a magical floating teacup. So all I did was took a a teacup that was a porcelain teacup that I got at the thrift store and I personally painted it black matte with gold inside. Now I took a fork and I bent it out of shape pretty much like you see it here and all I'm doing now is gluing the fork to the saucer and then creating some balance by adding some stones to it. Now here comes the tricky part. You have to make sure that the bottom is balanced well and that's why you have to add stones. Now once the bottom is balanced well and it's glued into place, and I would use hot glue as well as E6000 or Gorilla Glue, then you glue the top of the fork to your teacup. Now you cover that fork with some moss. Yes, you know how much I love moss. Just add some moss or some leaves and that'll cover the silver part of the fork. Now, once you've added all of your moss, and you can add it to the stones as well, but the most important thing is to measure, make sure that your teacup is well balanced and it's not going to fall over. Now, I'm adding some lovely Sola wood flowers, and I dye these in very 
dark colors except for the yellow but I thought these were like you know kind of darkish like maroon and burgundy and some blue and a little bit of purple I just like the darker colors I didn't decorate the teacup because I thought the flowers would stand on their own and I love the fact that the teacup is dark with that golden interior so there you have it basically there is your floating teacup. I hope you guys try it out. I did this because a friend of mine was having difficulty. She was like, how did you do this again? So here it is just for you, my friend. Did I tell you that this collaboration is specially sponsored by Surebonder? That's right. My favorite glue gunder, Surebonder, is sponsoring this collaboration. So you can enter to win and all you have to do is comment on each one of the videos as part of this hop. Let me know which, which project do you like so far, especially of this dark academia theme. Now, you can't have dark academia with some books. So I am going to repurpose this Dollar Tree book. And I specifically chose books that had a black cover, a hard cover. And all I'm doing is ripping apart. That's right, ripping apart some of this um, beautiful paper. And I forgot where I got it. I think I got this at Hobby Lobby. Not that it matters. You can get pretty paper anywhere. And um, just, I think it's, that's what's so wonderful about shabby chic and cottage core and all that stuff. It's kind of a little messy. It's a little messy. So you can just rip it apart. Now here I am setting fire to the paper. Why? Why not? Let's play with fire, Annie. You know, you've not been very good with fire in the past, but I, I, you know, fire can be your friend. So you can do this to also add to the ripping or the edging of your paper to make it look more rustic and old. I, I like that also. So it also gets a, some soot all over and you know, the house smells like you're burning down something. So just be careful, kiddos. Don't do this by yourself. And now I'm using my favorite product, product from Plaid, which is Mod Podge. Mod Podge is a rescue. I mean, if, you know, if you're going to do shabby chic and dark academia, if you're, I mean, lit, if you're going to do anything, you got to have some Mod Podge. I mean, it's got to be a staple in the house. It's part of like emergency crafting you know supplies mod podge you have to have it now i found this frame at the dollar tree as part of their scrapbooking stuff and i loved it i thought it was so antique -y. and i printed that print i printed that print i printed that print from <laughs> from the graphics fairy i love the graphics fairy so many vintage nostalgic uh you know images that you can use for shabby chic for cottage core for anything really she has the most beautiful images and they're free to use now here i'm creating another again another book and i just found this book i had this actually laying around the house i was going to throw it out it's a beautiful black hardcover so i said how perfect i'm going to use mixed media and just add some papers that's also another printout that i found on graphics fairy and um, just add some doodads and whatnots and make it look pretty that's basically what you do with this project now I'm going to make a specimen tray. I don't know, that doesn't sound right, but I think that's what it's called. It's a specimen. You know when they have those like flowers and specimens? Yeah, you know, specimens. Anyway, so I'm going to create a tray of uh, these specimens. And actually I'm using this Dollar Tree little silver plated tray. I'm sure you've seen it a dozen times and you're wondering, what do I do with it? Well, here you go. This is what you do with it. I use these papers or these pages from the other book and just mod podge them onto uh, my tray. And now again, this is a printout from the Graphics Fairy. I love the Graphics Fairy because she makes your crafts magical. So thank you, Graphics Fairy. Now I'm customizing my Sola wood flowers with a little dry brush technique. I'm going to use the same technique on the tray just to make it aged and weathered and it's just going to fit in better with the whole dark academia aesthetic. It's already looking really cool, I have to say. And then next, I decided I wanted to create a little bit of a shabby chic tassel. So here I am gathering some strips of that burlap fabric that I had left over from the previous project from our parasol and I'm going to be adding a tassel to the side of this tray since I'm going to hang this up as one of those specimen decorations and all I did was add the tassel and then add the beautiful customized solo wood flowers that matched so perfectly because with solo wood flowers you can 
customize it and dye it yourself or color it yourself however you like. And in addition, I thought it was really cool that those pages that I found actually had leaves printed on them. So what did I do? Of course, I cut out the leaves to add to my little shabby chic tassel. And here I am just touching it up, last minute touches. And again, I am so pleased at how this little specimen tray turned out. I hope you try it yourself. I just want to remind you one more time that this is a very special collaboration with Guys and Gals, our friend hop. And not only this is this a collaboration, but it's also a giveaway. So please hop on to the next video and go throughout all of them and leave a comment so you'll be entered to win. So what do you guys think? Dark Academia, maybe something for you? Yeah, something you can try out. Remember, this is just a little taste of Dark Academia. It's not a deep dive, but I love to include this wall parasol into my decor. And what dark, wonderful, magical library would be without a magical floating teacup? I thought these ideas would be something fun that everyone can do. So I hope you try a little dark academia in your decor this summer or maybe for the fall. Thank you again to my dear sweet friend Jamie, the crafty DIY guy, for coming up with this wonderful collaboration and to all the other YouTube creators that were part of this collaboration. I am more than honored to be part of this fantastic list and group of people. Thank you all. Thanks for spending some time with me and as I always like to say, stay safe. Be kind. God bless each and every one of you. Remember to live the adventure. And don't forget to hop to the next channel right down below. It's so much fun. Join us on the hop and you might even win something. See you soon.